Welcome back to my dark corner of this sick world. This is no time for levity. Of the many silent films that remain lost, one has captured the popular imagination unlike any other. London After Midnight, starring Lon Chaney and directed by Todd Browning, is the holy grail of lost films. But what was it actually like? I don't know. Presumably we can get an idea from the remake, also directed by Browning. Mark of the Vampire. These little wounds on his throat are the bite of the vampire. Despite a murder mystery subplot, this at first seems like any other early 30s vampire film. Bats on strings. <coughs> hysterical women. My father. <coughs> Bella Lugosi. Put a mark on that door so we'll know his hiding place. And unimportant servants. Maid. Butler. They've got names. Yes, yes. Have you been drinking? No. No, sir. The atmosphere is great. Although the acting is a bit hit and miss. Irina, I've got to know why you're acting like this. And the pacing is leaden. Well, are we going to sit here and think or are we going to do something? Well, I don't know about thinking, but the smart money is definitely on you sitting there. Exactly. My very own conclusion, Professor. But the make or break for Mark of the Vampire is the plot. I don't like it. Look away now if you don't want to know the twist. But you both said Baronotto would break down and confess if we confronted him with this gentleman. Yes, there are no vampires. The whole thing has been staged to flush out suspected murderer Baron Otto. Fancy, Ronnie. Vampires in the 20th century. Ripping. <laughs> They'll never believe that at the club. <laughs> Although for a great deal of the vampire screen time, the Baron isn't actually around. Are you mad? You can put it down to method acting vampires, but frankly, this is just the tip of an iceberg of unexplained plot points. Everything is getting cloudy. Getting cloudy. However, there may be a reason for this. 1934 was an awkward time for censorship, and the film lost 20 minutes of its runtime, to the extent that Lugosi actually had more lines in the trailer than in the finished film. Did you watch me? The only other time Bella Lugosi's been sidelined this much in a film was Plan 9 from Outer Space, and they did have an excuse. He was dead! There is no more foul or relentless enemy of man in the occult world than this dead alive creature spewed up from the grave. But I have a problem with this film that no amount of missing footage can solve, and it's summed up by this one line. We all thought our vampire scheme was so simple, so certain of success. Really? You hire an acting troupe to pretend to be vampires? This vampire business, it has given me a great idea for a new act. Including faking attacks and rigging one of them to fly? You track down a look-alike of the murdered man to convince the suspect that he too has become a vampire? I can't go through with it. He looks so much like father, even his voice. Then hypnotise that suspect. It's one year ago. To convince him that it's a year ago and get him to reenact the murder for you. But I feel certain now that we have the Baron hypnotised, he will reenact his crime. And the first adjective that springs to mind is simple? Yes, sir. Uh, no, sir. And at no point does anyone say, why not just hypnotise him? He knows that vampires didn't kill Sir Carol, cos he bloody did! You understand? Maybe it's just as well for London After Midnight if it stays lost. Don't you see the horror of it? That said, there is one reason to watch Mark of the Vampire. I was greater than any real vampire. No argument here. If you've got a film you'd like us to review, leave a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe. Your body drained dry of blood, you'll be afraid of the dark. <laughs>